How you doing guys? VIP club. This video is for the VIP club. This is Juancho. Uh, yesterday I was playing a little cash. I, I usually don't play Hold'em cash online, but I decided to just open up a table just so uh, um, hopefully an interesting hand happened. Um, I didn't really have anything interesting happen in tournaments. As you guys know, tournaments sometimes is pretty standard or whatnot. Uh, I sat down at a 50 cent one dollar table um, and I sat down with a hundred dollars and actually I had fifty nine dollars when the hand started so I was down like forty bucks. Um, I pick up pocket queens under the gun. I know in our last video we talked about queens too but this is a pocket queens under the gun and I just want to walk you guys through this hand really fast. Uh, I make it three dollars under the gun so that's a three X. I think for cash games that's pretty standard as opposed to tournaments in which I probably would make it 2.5x from under the gun or if I'm in the bottom or the cutoff I probably would make it a 2x. Uh, I, I know uh, Loretta was asking about you know the the sizing of the bets and uh, that's basically it you know uh, on cash hold them I probably would make it a 3x on cash live you know if I was playing a 1-3 table, I probably would make it $15. So it's a little different. We can talk about that later. Uh, bottom line is I get three colors. I get called on three spots. So we go four way to the flop, right? And I'm under the gun, so I have I don't have the best of positions. And the flop comes king, seven, six with two diamonds. Um, typically, if I was heads up, I would 100% bet this flop. But because I'm not heads up, I decide to check. Um, I think we will find out at this point if somebody has a king, you know, or even a draw or whatnot, and I would then decide to evaluate. What I don't want to do, and I hope you guys understand this, is uh, one of my biggest things when I play poker is to not blow up the pods if I feel that I have a margin of holding. Okay, Poker Queens is a really good hand pre-flop, but once the flop comes out and the flop comes with an ace or a king, my hand goes from being really good to being marginal. And the last thing that I want to do is blow up the pot and put myself in a spot in which I have to make a decision for a lot of chips and I'm not sure whether I have it or I don't have it, so to say, whether I have uh, the winning hand or not. So it gets checked around. Okay, so that's kind of a green light for me to, okay, well, either I'm getting trapped or proceed with caution depending on what the turn card is or whatnot. The turn card ends up not being a diamond. There's no straight. There's uh, a jack peels off. I think if they would have had pocket jacks, they probably would have re-raised me pre-flop. So I'm not too worried about that card. I mean, obviously, a go Greek, which was the first one to check, he could have a king, but uh, he checks. I think right now he would have bet. So then I decided to bet half pot, okay? Uh, at this spot, this is kind of like what I call a feeler bet. This is kind of like an information bet. I'm trying to find out where I'm at, you know, um, uh, if somebody raises me, I probably bet fold, like Bart Hanson says. Uh, one of the biggest things that he says is, I mean, you can't just check and play passively. You know, at some point, you just gotta, at some point in the hand, you know, yeah, on the flop, I check so that I don't blow it up the pot, but then on the turn, if I have the best hand, then I wanna put some money in that pot, you know. Um, the guy immediately next to us calls and the other two people fold. Okay, not a big deal. Now the river is a six of hearts. Actually, the river is a perfect card for me. Why? Diamonds miss. Uh, straight draw miss. So none of the draws that seemingly would have called me, you know, get there. The also, uh, 910 misses. You know, 910 actually was double cut because it needed a queen or an eight to get there. Uh, if he called with a different type of gut shot, he missed two. And it's very unlikely that he called with a six. And the other thing that you guys got to think about is if he had a six, you know, and he had a draw, you know, he would have to have like a diamond draw and he would have to have some sort of six of diamonds. Well, he can't have the six of diamonds because the six of diamonds is on the board. So that's another thing that you guys got to think about, I think. And what do I do here? Well, let me say this though. If your opponent missed, okay, if they missed a draw, the only way that they can win the pot is by betting because they have no showdown value for their hand. So if I were to bet right here, this is, has nothing to do with me being passive. It has to do with if I bet, he's going to fold anyway. So I think in this spot, when you get to a point in which you sense that your opponent missed and they do not have a made hand and they are forced to bet on the river, especially in, in this hand, heads up that I'm out of position going to the river, and they're forced to bet on the river because otherwise they cannot win the pot. 
then I think it's important to check. Because if I were to bed, he's just gonna fold because he has nothing to call me with. But if I check here and he bets like he did, he bet $15 onto a $24 pot. Okay, he bet $15.44 onto a $24.38 pot. Okay, so on this pot, I can very comfortably call. If he has a king, fuck it, take it. You earned it. You check the flop, right? You check the flop and you were able to earn that pot. But I can easily call here. Most likely he doesn't have a king. Most likely he either has a jack or he has a missed draw, whatever that would be. A diamond draw or a hand like eight nine, a hand like 10 nine, something that misses straight, something that misses diamonds. And my hand right now is the nuts. There's absolutely no need for me to raise because I'm only gonna get called by a better hand. So the only thing that I can do here, it's definitely not folding, it's definitely not raising, just calling. And it's pretty much a snap call, okay? Just so you guys know. And I called, and he had ace-10. He had ace-10 spades. So he basically called with an over, which would have been the ace, and he called with a gacha, which would have been a queen, which I had two blockers with, and that was just an easy pickup. And now I go from, you know, I, I win a, a nice pot to get him back to it. So I hope you guys understood that, um, uh, kind of, all the thought process that goes into trying to figure out exactly how to play every street optimally. And I think based on what I had and based on what he had, I think that I struck the most value that I could. I think had I bet the river, there's a very decent chance that he would have folded. Or he would have jammed all in and he would have put me in a horrible spot, horrible position. Maybe I call, maybe I fold, but I don't want to be put in that spot. You know, if I check, I, I keep the pot small. I, let, I give him a chance to hang himself, I give him a chance to bluff, and then I just pick him off, okay? Hope to, hopefully that made sense. Let's comment on this one. Let's start the, the, the healthy discussion for everybody, and let's all keep getting better. Good luck at the tables. Uh, I'm having a session here all day at Knights of Columbus in Indianapolis, and hopefully uh, an interesting hand will appear out of that. Thank you, guys. You guys have a great day. Bye.